Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to pass the Salesforce associate exam. Now, I do have a few items of housekeeping before we get moving into the meat of this video. One, um, there will be timestamps down below of all the different sections. So if you wanna jump around, bounce around, save this video for later, you can go to those in the description and you should be able to get to where you're looking for. Number two, is that I am creating a series on how I passed, how I passed each exam um, that is going to follow a similar structure to this video of like what the exam's about, what I used, what resources there are, all those fun things. And number three is that I am about six and a half months pregnant right now. So um, one, if I'm out of breath, I'm really sorry. And number two is that I am going to try to be as clear as possible, but if you need to ask any clarifying questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments down below. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the first part. So that's going to be, what is the Salesforce Associate exam? So the Salesforce Associate exam is a newer exam. I believe it came out in either August or September of 2022. And it is kind of a beginner exam to Salesforce. A lot of this has been classified as like, a, you are a super user of Salesforce or you're not quite an admin, but you're kind of exploring the Salesforce space. It explores some of the beginner things that a user or a super user should know about Salesforce, like how to learn on Salesforce and what resources are out there from Salesforce, kind of the basics. Let's actually go jump into the uh, exam guide which I'll be linking in any links I mentioned, I'll link them down below. But the different sections are gonna be the Salesforce ecosystem at 32%, which covers like Trailhead and how to use Trailhead. Then it's gonna be navigation at 28%, which is like, how do you get around Salesforce? What are the different pieces of getting around called? Then there's gonna be data model at 25%, like what are objects and how do they relate to one another? Then there's gonna be reports and dashboards, which is going to be how to take your data from Salesforce and answer your questions with it. So there's the four different sections of the exam. The exam is going to be 40 questions. They're gonna be multiple choice. Choose one out of three questions. And so this is different from normal Salesforce exams, which most of them are gonna be a choose one out of four, a choose two out of five, or choose three out of five, and they're going to be 60 to 65 questions in length. This exam is also a lot cheaper than most Salesforce exams. Most Salesforce exams cost around $200, but this one is about $75. So it's a lot more affordable, especially if you're not quite sure if you're wanting to go into Salesforce full-time as a career. And I do get a lot of questions about what kinds of jobs a Salesforce associate could look for. It could be a sales rep, this could be sales op, revenue operations, and marketing operations. I really highly doubt that you could find a Salesforce admin position just based upon getting this exam. However, you might find that you are going to be doing more CRM type stuff. Like if you wanna include things like HubSpot or um, SAP, if you're familiar with that, you could use the associate exam to kind of leverage yourself if they do use all those softwares together. So let's go ahead and jump into the next portion, which is going to be my background before taking the exam. Personally, I really find it useful to understand when someone is giving me advice or talking to me about a certain exam, about what they thought about it. I like to know their, their biases personally and what their background is prior to taking this exam, what their mindset was. Personally, at the time of taking this exam, I'd been working on the Salesforce ecosystem for seven plus years. First, as an end user or actually as a pool receptionist, just taking down information from my customers that came in or called over the phone. And then gradually, once I had graduated college, I became an admin and then worked my way up to consultant and working independently doing content and consulting. At the time of this certification, I had two certifications. Um, I had the admin and the app builder certification. I also took this exam pretty quickly after it had been released in September or August of 2022, but I did do some studying beforehand to understand kind of what I was going to expect or what I should expect on the exam. Now let's go ahead and move on to the resources that I did use on the exam and studying for the exam. So because of my background, having worked as an end user, and this is more of a super user certification as well as as an admin, I didn't feel like I needed to study too hard for the exam. However, I did use the trail mix that Salesforce provided to study for this exam. I think the trail mix took me about two days, which normally it should take longer, but I like to use a plugin on my Chrome browser called Natural Reader. I'll link all those down below to be able to listen to the trail mix while I was doing other things around the house. So I could listen to it and then I could answer the questions that came up at the end of each module or page on Trailhead. Also, a part of my mindset was I knew that this exam was going to have a lesser amount of questions. So I knew it was gonna be 40 rather than 60, which I had been 
um, accustomed to taking 60 question exams from Salesforce. I also knew that I was going to cover some things that I was super familiar with, as well as that it was a choose one out of three. And this was the first exam where I had taken a choose one out of three versus a more difficult group of questions where it's going to be a, a choose one out of four or a choose two out of five or three out of five. And so I felt fairly comfortable taking the exam. Now I only studied for maybe three days before I took this exam and I was able to sit down, take it. I think I was able to take it in about 30 minutes and be able to pass. So, and also another thing was that I did take this that the week that it came out. And so there weren't a lot of resources already out there to be able to use and be more confident that I was gonna be able to pass. So now with that, I do wanna transition into additional resources that have since become available to me and to everyone. I do wanna mention, I have a bunch of resources that I've created. I have created a course that is available on our personal course website, that is salesforceupskill.com, as well as it is still available on Udemy, which is the only course I have on Udemy. It has a glossary, it has a bunch of videos breaking down all the different sections of the exam, as well as practice questions. I think oh, currently we have over 6,000 students and from what I have heard is that if you have gone through all the resources, the glossary, all of the videos, and take practice exam, then you're pretty likely to pass. I think, I don't think I've heard of anyone failing from resources. Now that doesn't mean that you do have to take a paid resource. We also have a free mini course that I'll try and link down below that is here on YouTube, it covers a couple of the different more difficult concepts to understand for the exam. Other additional resources, um, there are a couple of bloggers that have released free practice questions that if you want to maybe take a a pre-exam and then take a post-exam, you can go ahead and do that. I'll leave, I think I know two people that have resources. I'll also leave some blogged notes or some blog notes from a couple of other bloggers about the exam and the different things that they felt were useful to understand. But with that being said, I do want to take a couple minutes to kind of go over what I, how I felt about this exam and what I think it means for the greater Salesforce community. Personally, I felt like as someone who had already been a Salesforce professional that this exam was fairly easy, fairly doable without even really studying too much. But again, I had been on the Salesforce ecosystem for seven years. And so I had already known a lot of these things that I probably didn't need to study. And I've seen a lot of backlash within the Salesforce community about this certification if it is necessary. Personally, I think it's a really great certification for a lot of different reasons. I think that this certification provides a stepping stone into the Salesforce ecosystem for people who maybe who are just out of college or who want to move from one position to another but who are constrained due to budget concerns or other purposes. Um, I've seen a lot of colloquial stories on the internet about people who are working maybe call center jobs who want to transition away from that and that this certification could really give them a stepping stone into a better job so then they were less constrained and they could work on their admin and then work on getting other certifications and learning other skills. Personally, I tend to take that approach as well. I think it's great to help someone who wants to show some proficiency in being a Salesforce user as well as some admin things. Um, there is a good amount of crossover between the associate and the admin exam. And so it is a great stepping stone to understanding some of those things. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I don't necessarily think that this certification is going to give you a Salesforce admin job, but you can look for other jobs that are going to be Salesforce admin adjacent that can help you step up and move up in your career which I always think is a good idea to be learning more, getting more certifications to move up in your career to just be better at your job, earn more money, whatever your motivation is. Um, and so some things that you could look for is going to be maybe a salesperson that could really use this, that could be very helpful and help you in your job as a salesperson, sales operations analyst, a revenue operations analyst, a marketing operations analyst. If you're familiar with any other CRM or software, this could really help you if you are in a help desk or entry level IT position, this could really be great to step into a Salesforce IT role. But that's kind of my thought, my reaction to this certification since this is another new certification that Salesforce has recently put out as when I am recording this video. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. I will try and get back to you. Be sure to give this video a like, check out the resources down below, both free and paid. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn and Twitter. Like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.